Coming up on This Week in Google, I'm Jason Howell filling in for Leo. He's out this week, but we have Stacey Higginbotham, of course, and Jeff Jarvis. We're going to talk all about the Echo Show. I've got the Samsung Dex, so we're going to show off what it's like to turn a Samsung phone into a desktop environment. We've got Google I.O. preview and dog tricks, of course. All that more coming up next on This Week in Google. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 404, recorded Wednesday, May 10th, 2017. Leo not found. This episode of This Week in Google is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. When it comes to the big decision of choosing a mortgage lender, work with one that has your best interest in mind. Use Rocket Mortgage for a transparent, trustworthy home loan process that's completely online at quickenloans.com slash twig. And by LegalZoom. LegalZoom's helped more than a million people with DBAs, LLCs, incorporation, and more. Visit LegalZoom.com and enter Twig at checkout for special savings. It's time for Twig this week in Google. Leo Laporte, of course, is out. He's in Colorado, enjoying Colorado weather, enjoying his son's graduation. Uh, so I wish him all the best. I'm Jason Howell, filling in for Leo this week. And I'm happy to do so. Uh, I always enjoy coming on This Week in Google and hanging out with my friends here. Of course, first of all, we've got Jeff Jarvis. You know Jeff, buzzmachine.com professor at the CUNY School of Journalism. How's it going, Jeff? Hey, glad to be here. I was off last week, but I'm delighted to be back. Excellent. You're back now, and then I get the pleasure of podcasting with you next week at Google I.O. We'll talk all about that here. Can't in a wait bit. for that. I know. I'm really looking forward to next week. Also, uh, joining us here, Stacey Higginbotham. How you doing, Stacey? I'm doing well. It's great to see you again, creator of the IoT Podcast at iotpodcast.com, uh, the Internet of Things newsletter at Stacy on IoT, or sometimes when I uh, on iot.com, when I look at that URL, I want to say onion, stacyonion.com, but that, that would make no sense whatsoever. It's just like a mind trick my eyes play. I have layers. Yes, like exactly. an onion. <laughs> layers upon layers of Internet of Things things. Uh, good to see you guys. There's been some uh, big news. And Stacy, I have to imagine the Amazon news from yesterday is probably top of mind for you being the queen bee of Internet of Things. I don't know. Has anyone it ever called you that before? Um, normally they just say that I'm the queen of various things, but oh, I'm okay. okay with being, you know, a bee. Okay. Zarina, <laughs> the connected Zarina. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Jeff, you are, you are now my official, like, herald guy who gets to name me. I don't know why this was my herald face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes sense to me. Uh, so you, so we were just talking prior to the show, you are in the Amazon Echo ecos, the Amazon ecosystem. Does that work? Oh, uh, yes. See what we did there? Um, I'm not. I'm in the Google Home world. Jeff, I think you're out. also in the Google I Home I, too, am right? Google Home, though I did order. I did order. You ordered the new, what is it, the Echo Show, as they announced yesterday? The Echo Show, which is a screen, a touchscreen device built with Amazon powered underneath. Um, so it does all the things that your standard Echo device has already been able to do with all the the kind of recipes and stuff like that 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 work underneath um, the layer, but skills. There you go. That's <laughs> that's the word in this world in that ecosystem. Uh, but also the touch screen, which allows you to do things like I don't know, video call, like in the future. What do you think about this, Stacey? Did when I mean we had kind of heard that this was going to happen at some point. Is this an answer to a call that you've had for a while now? So. We did hear this was going to happen. It should be about, oh, and I should tell everyone who's excited about it. It's June 28th that this will be out. Yes, I already ordered mine. And actually, I tried out the calling function because to me, less so the video calling, but being able to call people from my Echo is actually a really kind of cool thing um, from my perspective. So just being able to say, and I have my Echo on my desk, and I was trying to think, I was going to call you guys on the air, but... <laughs> But y'all aren't available, so now I'm going to see. I'm going to try to no call. Echoes. Right? Is it, is it only Echo no to Echo? Echoes. It is uh, for now only to Echo Echo. Now, if you have the Echo app on your phone, I can call you from there. But I may need yeah. to already have your phone number in my contacts for it to work. I don't have it. 
There's a lot of experimentation I haven't done because I only got it this morning because I'm on Android. iOS people got it last night. Surely so, Google will do it in a flash. Yes, I would think so. They have, I, I mean, about that. basically what you need is they're just piggybacking on my phone. Yeah, They use my right. phone number. So there's no reason Google shouldn't be able to do it. Um, anyway, the show itself has the camera and what it, it basically, I, I'm very excited about it. I'm a little concerned because the camera can't be, like there's no sh shutter for the camera. Uh, this is my turning off the camera by flipping down the little shutter, privacy shutter. So that's going to always be on. I think that's going to give a lot of people pause, but maybe video calling will be significant enough that they're like, woohoo, did they, I'll do it. Did they include a, a shutter um, slider cover sort of thing in the, um, what was it? Look? The look? Yeah. They did not. So Amazon's oh, basically like making the miss. bet. Yeah. Well, so it could be that they're just trying to find the right form factor for everyone. So you can put an echo in lots of things. Mm -hmm. I will say that I'm a little, there. there's a company called Nucleus that makes a echo-based intercom system that you stick on the wall. And basically what Amazon do, has done here kind of c kills the need for that device. So I'm a little like in How Amazon much was, that was, co was the cost of that? 200 per or oh, 150 right. so almost per. yeah if you buy yeah. if you buy two it's like 150 each i think but amazon the alexa venture fund was the largest investor in the nucleus so yeah. i talked to the ceo and he's i he'll be on my show tomorrow but he kind of looked at this as a betrayal of i mean he looked at it as it's like yeah great business decision big betrayal of the platform right there did you happen to ask him if there was any sort of like non-compete clause in their contract at all that that would state that because Amazon was funding so much of their product that there, I don't know, that there were any rules built into their contract that would prevent such a, a thing? Because I mean, the, the, the products mirror e each other so closely. Um, I did not ask him about that. I imagine he wouldn't have signed that, nor would Amazon have signed something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if Amazon, who who you think would have signed it, but I can't imagine that actually happening in business. Yeah, you're just buying equity. I, I mean, you know, it could be, you know, it could be a clause in any contract. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just can't imagine it making it through the, the yeah, lawyers. No. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, he, um, I, I read some interviews uh, with Frankel, who is the CEO of Nucleus. And I mean, it was, it, this has been a product for nine months now, uh, right around there, $5.6 million in funding. Um, and he, he's calling this kind of a wake up call for Amazon partners to just be like, look, you know, this, this was, this was our big thing that we had a really great thing going here. And then suddenly you wake up, you hear the rumors, but suddenly you wake up and you realize Amazon's basically just, uh, you know, taking your great idea and, and ran with it at the same time. It also seems like the obvious next step for a device like the Amazon echo, um, so I don't know. I don't know where to go with that. <laughs> so the the screen, the screen is an obvious thing because when you have voice, it is horribly inefficient to get a list of things. Like when I ask, you know, I the other day I was asking for comic book stores near me, and the Echo was like started listing them, and I'm like, ah, too much information. It was it was a stupid request. Uh, so that makes sense. It makes sense if you think about video calling, once you think about adding voice calling. Now we were always kind of like, could it, could that be retrofitted? Apparently it can. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is, it's obvious, but it's still kind of like, dang, dang, Jeff Bezos, you're just merciless, which we knew. Yeah. Right. Um, I should tell people it doesn't do 911. Um, they actually make you sign that away when you, when you log on, it's gonna say, Hey, you acknowledge it. You can't do nine one one. So no help. Uh, I've fallen and I can't get up. Feature. You could call someone who has a landline, and they could call nine one one. I can't even. Does Does Skype do nine one one now? No, no, I don't think so. Even cell phones are really bad at nine one one because mm -hmm. you know years after we've succumbed to the fact that nobody has a landline, uh, we still don't have good e nine one one capabilities. Go cover me. Nope. Mm -hmm. um, actually, just last week or maybe the week before, 
the FCC, when a Je Jessica Rosenworcel, who was one of the former FCC commissioners, she actually shouted, shared data that said for the first time ever, landlines were, there were fewer landlines in homes than mobile phones. So more homes than, more homes had mobile phones as their primary phone as opposed to a landline. So that's a right. milestone. 50.8% of households only mobile in the second half of 2016. Wow. That's up from 48.3% yeah. a year earlier. Uh, and 6.5% only have landlines. Meanwhile, I'm moving. I, I have an appointment with Sonic to get their internet finally. I've been on Comcast for quite a few years. Finally having Sonic install. Um, they can only serve my house with fiber to the node, not fiber to the home. So it's piggybacking on AT&T's network, but that's, you know, Sonic in the, in the mix is better than no Sonic in the mix as far as I'm concerned. Um, but it comes with it, whether I want it to or not, as far as I can tell, I get a landline again. So <laughs> I get a, I get a phone of some sort. So uh, we've been without a landline for years and now suddenly we're getting one again. What's the speed? We don't even have the, a jack. Uh, the speed is wow. 20, 20 megabits. It's, oh, it's, a, it's pretty decent. So, so I'm told Verizon is going to offer near gigabit both ways. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fios. Well, Fios already had a gigabit both ways. Uh, didn't they, hadn't they announced that? Or is that really new? I don't know. I think it was about three weeks Sorry, ago. I'm like, wait a second. I thought they already had gigabit. Uh, I haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> Okay, no. Uh, no, apparently they hadn't. Right. Look at me. No, I am wrong. No. Sorry. No, no, they had. They've announced it. Yep, no, 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 no. Here's in Fios. It's 80 bucks a month for Fios Gigabit. Okay. Oh, that's relatively cheap. That Man, is, yeah, I yeah. still that don't is. have Gigabit. Dang. <sighs> that is really nice, though. That is pretty inexpensive. Oh, Maybe I'll jealous. finally come in okay on the show. I was going to say, imagine our, our lag then. <laughs> Latency. We'll be negative lag at that point. Uh, your so, computer can't handle it exactly your ancient start smoking it'll be on fire you don't want that um so the echo show you've ordered it stacy you've ordered it uh jeff i ordered it what so what what is your use case for this jeff you, having not already well, bought not into the be ecosystem in my, it's not gonna be in my closet taking pictures of my clothes i'll tell you that for sure all right it'll be in your kitchen taking pictures of your food i don't know it's i i, I want to play with it journalistically i want to yeah. see i want to take it at school and 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 i think uh, you know, it's kind of weird that it's a uh, voice has some real strength as a, as a, uh, uh, interactivity mechanism, uh, but there's no visual. So now if you put voice and visual together, I wonder what that's like versus keyboard. Yeah. It's like, like we're talking together. Right. Like, we're actually, yes. <laughs> like what we're doing right now. Wait a minute. <laughs> Oh, yeah. that's really weird. No, but I mean, it is it is a little different. Like I was thinking about this yesterday. When I think about Touché. when I was a kid thinking about the future, the air quotes future, I definitely thought, in the future, we won't have phones, we'll have video phones, which we kind of have, right? Like for the last few years, video calling is is no longer this obscure, weird thing. We're used to it. However, at the same time, we don't use it nearly as much as when I was a kid, I thought we would in the future, in air quotes. But something like this could actually get used a lot. If you have a single console, which, I mean, it has a lot of purposes, but it makes it really easy, low friction to just go over to it and bloop, Hey mom, how's it going? Oh, I see you're busy. I don't want to bother you right now or whatever the case may be, you know, versus like, I just, I don't think of picking up my phone and going, I need to call someone. I'm going to make it a video call for some reason. You know what I mean? It's, it's like different. It takes the device out of the equation. Yeah. It go, you go from thought to action without any friction in between any extra steps. So it makes a lot of sense from that point. You're like, Oh, I should call my mom. Hey, that's how I call mom. Right. And we just called mom. On a lot we of didn't because devices. my my echo is on mute, but I have an echo and I'm like sitting here. I could see if Kevin will take my call. He might ignore it, though. <laughs> and you've so you've tried these calls at this point. Yeah. So Kevin and I talked this morning. We did a call this morning. Do you want me to see if I can call him? I, I think that's what we do here. If, All right, if given here the go. opportunity, we make on the fly calls for sure. <laughs> that's a lot. Call Kevin Tofel. And this is happening on your dot. It, it goes green. Uh, I don't know if okay. you can tell as it's ringing. Okay, yeah, I can see that. 
Is that a new color for the Echo? You're it is a new to, color for the not, Echo. Not I've used never to seeing the, the green. Oh. I don't think Kevin's answering. He's watching. He's like, I'm not picking up. He's like, no, no way. I'm not picking up. <laughs> yeah, you know, have back. It's been a long up. time since he's been on the show. Yeah. He's probably like, nope. Yeah, I don't no. think so. Although here, so this gets into another thing. I couldn't find a way to mute it, which means suddenly we've got, if you have my phone number, basically you can tell Alessia to call my home now in a way that you could do when you had like a landline. Oh, oh, it's ringing. Oh, okay. Oh, Kevin Tofel's calling me. Alessia, answer. Hey, Kevin, I'm on Twig, and so are you. I just wanted to show off the calling. Okay. <laughs> Was this irritating to you? Uh, this is fine. <laughs> hi, but Kevin. it's like having a phone ring. Hey, Everyone Kevin. Says hi. We can't hear us. <laughs> yeah, you can't hear us. Can't hear. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Bye, Kevin. See you next week at Google I.O. Hang up. <laughs> All right. Well, there it works. And and I think, you know, another interesting part, and you, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, is it's not just these devices. It's in the app. So if you just have the app installed, that app, I mean, up until now, that app has been all about managing the hardware, right? For the most part. Now it's like that app is becoming also a, a messaging service, which is kind of interesting, but you're locked into Amazon's messaging service. So it's yet another, uh, yet another trail, uh, to, to venture into if you're, if you're getting into messaging. Indeed. And it, you're not, but you're not sending these kind of messages. And I'm sorry, yeah. Karsten, at the beginning of the show, we should tell everybody in the podcast to turn off their echoes, turn the mics off on their echoes. <laughs> if you haven't done that already, now might be a good time. <laughs> I'm a bad person. Oh, I will. Oh man. We didn't, you, you didn't prepare people for that one. Uh, so, okay. So speaking of Google, so we have Amazon's announcement here. Uh, Nucleus, by the way, one comment before we move on that, that I think he made in that interview. I can't remember if it was that interview or a different one is that, they believe, and obviously Amazon feels this way too, that this is the Trojan horse for this category is calling, is that we've seen a lot of a lot of pickup in home, you know, voice controlled speakers and in that market. Uh, I think there was a study, what is the study here? It's a uh, e-marketer forecast says that Amazon will have 70.6% of the voice enabled speaker market in the US this year, Google Home 23.8%, but that those who buy one, don't buy a competing one. So there's a lot of lock in there. Uh, it's not common for one person to buy devices on, on both sides to have both an echo and a Google home. So Jeff, you're an outlier. Um, but I also, have one. but and, well, and there you go. See, I'm the only one that doesn't apparently. Uh, so I'm the outlier and, uh, and that calling is going to be what moves these even further into the mainstream that it, that it, I don't know, justifies the product the existing phone. in people's homes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's also it's the intended as a network go effect. Ahead. Oh, it, it's the network effect. Right. If I buy one, I'm going to tell presumably my mom and say, "Mom, you got to get this because you can just shout, call Stacy." That would be a terrible idea. But um, <laughs> or yes. you could just drop in. That's another feature, right? Yes. The drop in yes. feature. We do not want to forget the drop in feature, which is basically a way for you to select someone to opt in that that person can drop in on your video feed at any time that they choose. No, Am I no, misunderstanding no, this? No, no that's, that's, do I mean, this is, this is for families. I mean, this okay. is like what I would have in my house. It's the same thing of like people who check in on their family through the nest cam. Right. Okay. All right. I mean, that's a good you way to, could, that's a good way oh, to but think it. about that's the sex industry. Huh? Oh, this, oh, this just took a dark oh. turn. I didn't see that. Oh, one. Like, oh yeah. man. Okay. <laughs> I see the family example. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess so because you know, like I have, I have a ring uh, outside, and it's got a video feed on it. Obviously, someone rings the doorbell. Ring, by the way, is a sponsor. Just uh, full disclosure. But uh, someone hits hits the bell. I get a notification on my phone and I have the ability to jump in on the video feed. And yeah, there mm -hmm. have been many times where I get that. I look at it and I know, Hey, my, my kids and my wife, they just arrived home. Okay, cool. You know, I know that now for whatever valuable reason that is. Um, but I guess it's kind of the same thing. It just happens to be in your kitchen or the kitchen yes. of 
let's say your elderly parents is one example that I that right. I saw uh, put about. So I guess I kind of see that. Just and speaking of rings, weird. Your ring will be integrated into the Echo Show, the video from your ring. Oh, really? Oh, that's so cool. So if you're upstairs and, you know, you've got one upstairs and your phone, or not your phone, your doorbell rings and your phone somewhere else, you can just be like, boop. What's that? The video will pop up on Do the they screen. also imagine it's an intercom within the house? Is all that somewhere? You know, I, I did Ooh, see that. Cool. Um, I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Again, Everyone, everyone leaves me during the day, so I can't make my husband and daughter play with me on all these devices. So I'm like, ah. Oh. You have to list your dog, obviously. You know, she's smart, but she doesn't. She's not very obedient. I don't know she if you noticed know that. How to how to talk to uh, the Amazon Echo? Um, yeah, that would be that would be really cool to be able to talk between devices. I suppose if you had a large enough house, probably need a large yes. enough house. Otherwise, it also I should say they're also talking about working with your Arlo cameras. So if you've got the net your Arlo cameras. You can actually see like what's going on outside your house or at a camera, wherever one of your cameras is. So okay. suddenly you've got this security console, basically, that's on your kitchen. Right. Accessible at all times. Anyone can walk up to it, tap it, and get going. Nice. Um, cool. So so then, I was going to segue a little bit earlier. Um, do we think that Google's working on something similar? I mean, they have to be, right? Like it's They the have next, to be. It's obvious it's that you need step. a screen. Yeah. Yeah. Stacy's grinning. I so I think you need a screen. I don't think it actually has to be on the device. And that's where I think this gets really interesting. Like I I was kind of disappointed that Amazon didn't say, hey, you know it'd be really cool. Let's turn whatever let's say I ask the Echo for something, like the list for comic book stores. Instead of telling me, what if she realized that is a really lengthy thing and just sent it to my phone screen, right? And, and to be sure, today that happens in the app. But let's say the same way when you send a Google, like when you're on uh, when you're on Maps on your browser and your desktop, you can actually send directions to your phone and you get like a notification. It just pops up right. and it's like. So imagine you got a notification with the list of comic book stores, right? Or you got it on your television screen if it decided that's where you want, if you told it that's where you wanted right. it. Right. But there, so Stacey, I was wondering about that. What's the installed base of of Chromecast versus uh, Amazon Fire? Any I idea? I gotta think Chromecast is higher. I don't. I do have too. I think it's way higher. Mm -hmm. So, so, so if you look at Amazon versus Google on this, so if if if, if you're right, Jason, if Google is building it, advantages. Um, I mean, it's interesting that Amazon, the video they showed was a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. So they're acknowledging, you know, the the, the rest of the world. Um, but. Uh, so Google has the advantage of Chromecast. So whatever it does can communicate with that. It has your photos. It has your email. has your contacts. Uh, it has a phone service already. Um, so you want to get to my crazy idea? What's that? You ready for this, you guys? All right. Amazon should relaunch their phone. Boom. Fire Ooh. Phone 2.0, but don't call it Fire Phone. Call it? The Echo Phone. Yeah, right. Integrate okay. it with the with the Echo Sphere. <laughs> I don't know. So, so because this is what I've been thinking. I'm like, oh, you know, if you're going to build an ecosystem, go all in. Um, I don't know. Some people really liked the Fire Phone, too. And it ties back into all their shopping. Because, and again, when Amazon, if you buy this and they have access to a camera looking in in your home, especially in your kitchen, think about all the data they can start gathering. They're going to know what products you eat, what products you cook with. They're going to know who's in the kitchen with you. And, you know, Ooh. that's... This ain't was, happening was, in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Craziness. probably not. I mean, from a privacy standpoint, the, the only nice thing about Amazon is they don't share that data with anyone. They want you, they want all that data so they can tell you what to buy. They don't want to give it to anyone else. So right. yay for that. Yeah. I mean, I could actually really see Amazon trying again with the phone. If if the Fire Phone wasn't such a spectacular failure as it was, or at least as it was reported widely and, and seen by people, I you can know, understand why Amazon's sucked. hesitant, but uh, I could the see Zoom why sucked, I'm coming back. But Apple went and made the iPod really useful. I mean, I don't know. Yes, I think it was a spectacular failure, but. 
but it but it stopped. is I mean it is an obvious category when you think about what Amazon is doing from a technological perspective around the Echo, um, the capabilities of the Echo, and their Fire tablets. Fire tablets is basically, you know, the, usually you think of tablets going kind of hand in hand with, you know, the smaller form factor phone. Uh, the only reason Amazon doesn't have a phone right now is because the Fire phone didn't work so well, but maybe it was because they, they hadn't learned certain lessons that they know now. Maybe they could do it again and they could do it right. I could totally see it. If they just put out an Android, you know, go ahead and put out a full Android phone, but add other features. But, but you know, then again, all right, so Stacey, I mean, think about it. Why do they need the hardware? Um, they would need the hardware to have control, like if they can't get their app on a phone, basically. So I guess any Android phone, let me ask you this, and, and I'm not trying to answer your question with the question, but why do they have, for like all the Amazon video stuff, you have to download a separate app store to put that on your phone. Mm -hmm. Is that just DRM based or is there some other deeper technical reason? I've, I've not known the reason yet. It is a pain, by the way, when I, when, when I have to rebuild a phone or a tablet, it's royal pain. So I don't, don't make it obvious or easy. Yeah. So I, I, I actually don't know if they need the hardware or they just do that for making my life a little bit more difficult and your life a little difficult. <laughs> but um, it gives them it gives them more data. It gives them a place to automatically send stuff in the ecosystem. I guess it gives them better messaging. Uh, I don't know what else it gives them. You on the go, so you could talk to, I mean, you could do that through the app. I mean, what's more personal about a person than how they use their phone, particularly if Amazon's goal is to learn more about you and help you buy things through them, having a I phone how on your person is incredibly valuable to gathering that information the same way that it is from, you know, a device in your kitchen is, is informative to them about what, you know, what items you need when you're in the kitchen that, that you might be able to buy from there. Well, that's, I'm like, actually, what's more personal than that? I would argue that all the data that's coming from my home because there's a lot of stuff my phone doesn't see that my house does. That's true. Creepy. <laughs> this coming so, so, from so Stacy, did you did you order the um, uh, the Amazon uh, uh, camera thing? I put my less myself on the invite for the look, which is the style camera. That's right. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and then the show. I also I, I bought that or I yeah. ordered it. They, allow, they allowed you to do that yesterday with the with the look. Yes. You had to do a pre-order. And I just realized there is a camera cover for the look. It's the closet that you put it in when you close the doors, okay. which is what I they showed in their in promotional closet. video. I'm like, I change in my closet. That thing's not going in my closet. <laughs> okay. I, I, I really honestly, so like, I'm very concerned about the show. Like, as I think about it in... I obviously have to try it because this is my job and I will, but I don't really know if I want an always on camera that's going to be sitting in my house. I mean, I do know that I don't want that actually. And right. they haven't so far given me compelling value to be like, hot diggity, let's leave that sucker in all the time. Right. Let's, I mean, yeah, it's just, there, there's just that disconnect of an internet connected device with an always on camera that resides in your bedroom with, which, you know, one of his main purposes <laughs> is to allow you to dress in front of it and it can tell you whether you look good or not. Uh, you can think of a million reasons why that sentence does not compute for a lot of people. Uh, from, from a product standpoint, I have, I have a really hard time thinking that a product like The Look could actually gain traction. But I guess there are people out there that, that don't care. It's the benefit outweighs the potential. <laughs> The so someone is saying that the Amazon, the camera is not always on, on the echo show. And I don't know if that's true or not. So, so is it a queuing sort of mechanism in the same I mean, way? The way it, the way it listens. Yeah. The way it listens is it just turns on when it hears its wake word. So if it's right. just waiting for the wake word, well, there you go. But there's but still, there's still that thought. There's still that creeping thought in your mind, which is, all of those other things that I said, internet connected, video camera in your bedroom, like that just, eh. people, people are very uh, wary of security issues in, in this day and age. And I just, I don't know. I would be very hesitant to bring that into my bedroom, uh, you know, 
that type of a device just doesn't doesn't compute for me. But maybe once you have it and you experience the benefit, it wipes all those fears away. I don't know. I don't know. So, see, I don't know how drop-in would work, though, if it wasn't always on. I guess it just turns on when someone requests a drop-in? That's my understanding. But So, Okay. I mean, it's basic, basically I'm given access to just, yeah, literally. To control your camera. To then. control your camera, to tap into okay. your camera feed when I want to. All right. Well, there we go. Yeah. yeah. No one's getting that power except for me or my husband while Oof. we're away. And maybe, and maybe that is what Amazon's intention with that is, is yeah. Perfect example, right? Like you, you might actually want to be able to, to drop in, in that very specific Example. It's easy to stretch it out though, and be like, and think of a million scenarios why you wouldn't want that uh, that capability. But it's opt in, so you can choose. And I guess that's the power. You know, that's I'm going to let everyone have. everyone know that when you have a connected home, affairs are not really possible. Just putting <laughs> that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Everything from sleep sensors to always on cameras to your car tracking you. It's just it's D it's. Doable. Divorce rates are going to plummet because people are going to be forced to be good. <laughs> I was going to say our marriage rates will disintegrate and divorces will increase because now people because, will have. <laughs> because the, the influence of those tracking devices isn't enough to keep them from doing it anyways and getting caught. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and, and before we kind of get out of the voice assistant realm, uh, we also heard like they're coming at us fast right now. Harman Kardon has the Invoke speaker, which is a Cortana powered uh, home <laughs> device. So they're getting in on the on this game uh, using Cortana underneath. Uh, and I don't know if that's an official announcement yet. I think we're still still waiting to hear more. They about showed that, it but. at CES. Oh, did they? I well, missed they talked that. To they talked. Uh, maybe they didn't show. Oh, that was the Lenovo one. But they did talk about it at CES. Oh, okay. So, okay, so cuz yeah, everyone was excited about this. I was like, I swear to god, I have seen this before. Yeah, I hadn't even heard of that, but I'm um, excited to use Cortana. In a home assistant kind of variety. Yeah, I just I've ne well, just in general, I don't have any any PCs anymore and Kevin has told me that Cortana is actually really good, so I would like to use it. If you did have Windows 10 PCs, then you could potentially at some point, I think it's this, this September, Microsoft apparently has plans to um, roll out something called, man, what is it? It's a, uh, it's their own control through, through Windows 10 PCs. So instead of, instead of it being uh, having an actual voice assistant in different rooms, any Windows 10 PC throughout your house becomes the kind of hub that controls your smart home, taps into Hue, Nest, Insta on all those, does void, uh, video and voice calls, powered by Cortana. So it's basically your Windows 10 PC becomes a, a uh, Amazon Echo or a Google Home, which you know, kind of sounds. But you saw the uh, was it on the rundown the uh, the Raspberry Pi, Google Home. Oh yeah, that well yeah. that that ties into this as well. Actually, that's it at does. the very top of the dock. Um, the uh, yeah, that's the uh, AI. AIY, AI yourself, <laughs> which this kid is a, a product of the Magpie magazine. It's like a, it, it's included with the latest issue of Magpie magazine. It includes the cardboard housing. So it's like a box, essentially a speaker, uh, wiring, a stereo microphone. There's an arcade style button that goes on the top. So essentially this taps into the assistant SDK that Google it doesn't, released. It doesn't listen for your voice. You have to hit the button instead. It's like the, exactly. the cheap echo. Exactly. You slam that button, like a, which is probably pretty satisfying, actually. Just go, pam, and then uh, and then give your, your voice query. And you've got assistant in a cardboard box, as Google loves to do. So I would say that's kind of gimmicky fun, but... Anytime you have to touch something, that kind of sucks up the magic of voice. Like yeah. I said it with the tap. I know that some people use the tap and that's great, but having to touch it kind of, why? Yeah. It's not that being said, I love buttons. I will push buttons all day long. Well, it's like an arcade style button. So you know it's got a satisfying yeah. click to it. It's like, bam. Uh, I also saw that the, the, um, the AIY kit is being used in a number of different ways. Somebody else created a candy dispenser 
<laughs> out of it. Yes. So it's basically an assistant powered candy dispenser. That yeah, how, is, how is this AI? Uh, that's that's a really great question. I think it's just using the the assistant SDK to pull it off. I don't know exactly. Oh, voice, okay, fine. Yeah, um, exactly how they're doing that. But they created a housing for it. They mounted the hardware in there. They created a sensor so that it actually, you tell it whether you want a little bit of candy or a lot of candy. And then it detects when the cup is under there and dumps a bunch of candy in your cup. You know, we all need this. It's important yes. stuff right here. This is the future of artificial intelligence. Now, what would be even better is if when it was done, it reordered the candy from Amazon through the Dash replenishment Ooh. service. Ah, yes. I thought you were going to say that like, if, it, if it sorted the colors. I thought that too. I was like, it gets rid oh. of all the green M&Ms or whatever the color <laughs> I, is. I'm waiting for more candy. I'm like, I don't care what color it is. <laughs> and now I want to eat some candy. Uh, how about we take a break? And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about Google stuff. Um, we have IO coming up next week. Why would we do that? It's talking about Google stuff. It's it's in the name down All there. All right. This week in Google, we'll we'll, uh, we'll spend a, a segment talking about Googly stuff. But we had to start with Amazon. That was kind of the big news, and I think everybody's really interested and excited. And I hope that Google comes out with its own screened device similar to that. Who knows? Maybe we'll see it at I/O. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, first, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode of this week in Google, and that is Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Uh, you want to work with someone who you can trust. And we all, you know, we live our lives in the digital age. We live our lives online. So anytime we have to then remove ourselves from that and go to some analog method of finding information, go, filtering through stacks of paperwork to pull out details in order to get a mortgage. I mean, it's not the easiest thing in the world. So you want to work with a company that, that can kind of cater to that side of you that can help you in your digital <laughs> digital uh, life. And uh, you also wanna work with someone that you can trust, obviously, that has your best interest in mind and can come and walk you through the process. Uh, use Rocket Mortgage and you're gonna get a transparent uh, process that's just easy. It's, it's as easy as it can be. Um, they have your best interest in mind. You'll get transparent online process throughout the whole thing. It gives you the confidence to make an informed decision. You don't have to waste time searching through stacks of paperwork. Uh, with Rocket Mortgage, you're securely sharing your financial information online to get a mortgage approval in minutes. You don't have to wait around for it. You can even play around with the numbers, adjust the rate, the length of your loan uh, in real time, just to make sure that you get the right mortgage solution for you. It's all customized to what you are looking for with your mortgage. Uh, whether you're looking to buy a home, or if you need to refinance your existing mortgage, that works too. You can lift the burden of getting a home loan with Rocket Mortgage. Make it a little bit easier. Make your life easier. That's what it's all about. So skip the bank. Skip the waiting. Go completely online at quickenloans.com slash twig. That's quickenloans.com slash twig. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. And we thank Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans for their support. Thank you, uh, Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. All right. So let's see here. So a uh, show of hands, who's going to Google I.O. next week? You just I, did I'm that to make her feel bad. No, no, I, no, honestly, no. I didn't know. I'm doing the live monologue. I, or not the live monologue. Um, I'm, what is it? Monolo no. Oh, the, the live the, the, cover keynote? the coverage of the keynote? Thank you. Okay. I'm, I'm. Oh, you're doing talking. the live. Oh, good. So, so I assume I talked to you all, right? So. You'll, you'll, you'll be kind of there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, if, no, no, we won't be. Yeah. No, we're going we're not gonna do the live keynote from there. We'll do the show from there. Okay. So you'll bring all your wisdom from having done that to this show. Oh. You'll catch I like all the how things you think that, I've got wisdom. Yeah, you'll catch all the things that we miss. You are. Because sometimes when you're there, the you miss things. Zarina. Exactly. Yes. So, I'll, I'll try to be the Google Zarina that day. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think we're going to see? I, I, I mean, obviously, uh, Android O, similar to last year with N, we knew about it kind of going into Google I.O. And there were things that were revealed at the show about the Android release, um, more or less, you know, more than what we already knew going into it. So I'm sure we'll see some stuff around that. Do you guys have any big big predictions or things you hope to see from Google out of this I.O.? How about a well, brain I, I, you, to... You know, oh, go on. Go ahead. I was going to say, how about a brain to computer interface? Dun, dun, dun. That's I'm just, just kidding. Well, Facebook was talking that. Yeah, they could. I know. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Jeff, you have a serious one, though. You should... 
Well, you know me. I want I want a new Chromebook Pixel. <laughs> That'll never hardware. die. That'll never go away. That's That'll never go away. Never, I want, I want, I want uh, 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 a Pixel C. I want Google hardware. Oddly, I like Google as a hardware company. Yeah. Do you think I Google's going to? But do you think Google's going to undo their their previous decision to not have any hardware giveaways and be like, eh, we changed no, our mind. I, Here you go. I, yeah, I don't think they'll give anything away. Nah. I don't think they'll give anything away. Um, I, th I think we'll see some really cool stuff on the machine learning side. I don't know if we're going to appreciate it, but we definitely will see it. Um, and then I'm actually looking for some good cloud case studies just because I know they did their cloud stuff already, so maybe they won't do that here. Mm -hmm. But I would like to – I feel like Google is actually making some good strides in areas that it hasn't talked about yet. So just based on conversations I've had. So I'd like to see them tout that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. There's going to be a lot of sunburns. We'll be at the Shoreline Amphitheater. Although I'm uh, thinking the weather is not looking to be quite oh, as, really? as balmy oh, as it was up. last year. It's a little bit cooler. That might not be a bad thing, though. Uh, oh, wear the hoodie. Yeah, you, yeah, definitely bring layers. It's weird. It's like 65 degrees outside and, and cool today, which I want warmth. But anyways, um, bigger rooms. You can come to Texas. <laughs> I know. I'm sure there are a lot of places I could probably go. And then I'd, and then I'd be like, okay, I have the warmth. I have too much of the warmth. Maybe I changed my mind and I want to go back to the cool. Uh, I just can't make up my mind. That's the problem. 64 and six, no, it's Wednesday, Thursday, 69 and 75. That's not too bad. 75, Friday. 75 will be about perfect. I think because when yeah. you're out there wandering around, it gets hot really fast. Having it a little bit cool is actually probably going to be pretty nice. Um, they say they have bigger rooms, more people to facilitate for the rooms. By the way, they updated their Google I.O. Um, 2017 app. app. So if you run that app, you can reserve seats now. <laughs> this year, they're doing things a little different. You can actually reserve oh. your seats. Wow. Oh, that's nice. So I would recommend, definitely, Jeff, I would recommend taking a look at the, the talks Ooh. that you want to go to. Log into the app, and it'll give you the option to um, under your ID to to reserve a seat. I'm I'm curious to know how they how they'll track that when you're there. So what you do? So pardon me for what I'm about to say. Um, you are pardoned. Uh, when you have one of these at Davos, okay, these are the greatest name tags on earth because Lotus. It's not a very long thing. It fits around. It never goes the opposite way. And then you, nice. you're registered for the session and you just hold this up and FC ah, that to a sense. thing and it, and it tells the minder, green light, let them in. That makes a whole lot of sense. And then those who didn't get in, there's always some who don't show up and then they start letting people in. Right. Bit by bit. Yeah. And they did. And Google did mention that they were going to leave um, a certain number of seats in, in all of the talks for, um, you know, open for drop-ins and stuff like that. They weren't giving them all away to reservations. Uh, I didn't have any problems reserving for any of the well, talks. Well, that now, I was now that you've said in. this on the air, now I'm never going to get yeah. anything. I think you're give probably a, give okay. Give Jeff a moment. He's like, I think you're probably okay right now. I have a feeling beginning of next week is when things are going to start going crazy, where people are like, "Oh, I never actually reserved. I better do that now." So, anyways, do check that out though, Jeff, because I would hate for you to not get into things that you're that you're looking forward to. Um, wearables. Is, is wearables a passing fad at this point? And it's like, eh, who cares? Out of Google um, I.O.? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Depending on what the about, response here. What about, um, I, I think, answering Facebook's AR craze with Google AR? Will Google stick with 360? Or will it start to also, considering its strength in AI, in AI go to AR? Mm. Yeah, there was... Um, there was a rumor last year uh, that Google was working on its own actual standalone hardware for this stuff. I, I don't know if that was for AR or VR, but I wonder if that end, ends up materializing in, in some sort of way. But again, VR, like I wonder, I also have to wonder how how that's working for Google. They did Daydream. Daydream's very limited as far as what devices you know are compatible with it. And VR, just as a trend right now, seems to be cooling off. Man, trends don't last very long in technology. It's like two years and they're done. Um, so I wonder how much of an emphasis they'll actually place on that. I know Facebook's all in. Facebook continues to, to beat that drum. Yep. Um, so maybe Google's there as well because, you know, their biggest competitor is. 
I would love to see what what Google would do around AR. Um, Ooh, maybe they'll tell us what they're doing. They they showed off the jacquard coat with Levi's. Oh right, um, yeah. at South by. Maybe they'll, I don't know, show something cool there. ATAP. So, yeah, wearables from ATAP, which would be way cooler than like a new Android Wear watch. Right. Here's a new watch. <laughs> it's triangular this time. Yay. So by the way, just to, so the keynote's not till one p.m. No, that's that's not correct. It's I think it's ten. Uh, 10 a.m. I believe. Oh, nine, so it's doing that would be one p.m. Your time. Thing. It's yeah. adjusting the damn time. Oh man, I, Google, I hate that. <laughs> I do too. This I gets me. That. I can no longer make. I can't make appointments when I'm on the road because I'm like, I just don't know what time zone anything's in. Oh, and I know, I know it's because Google's smarter than me. But Jeebus, it's it's <laughs> no, really just tough. Let, and I cannot find the option to say don't do that. It you know doesn't it it ask you. It asks me no. every time I switch time zones. Oh, no, I'll it doesn't it, ask Jeff. me and I don't know how to take it. I'm and I'm unhappy. I'm just unhappy. Oh, oh man. I don't <laughs> Is do it only traveling. that, Jeff? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't do I've enough traveling. I have, I have ran it. No, I'll problem. tell you what's going to make me. Well, well, later we'll talk about what's going to make me yeah. really unhappy. Oh, boy. I'll, I'll, I'll look for that setting in the meantime. <laughs> uh, tablets, convertibles. Feel like there's you know there's still that looming question uh, around Andromeda. I think they could announce a convertible Chromebook. Yeah, yeah, I think they could do it. Like a Google the one branded. That, that the Samsung is. Eh, eh, eh. Yeah, I know. I'm waiting. I, I mean, I love my my Chromebook Pixel. It's the first generation one. I'm still using it. Not today, and we'll talk about that here in a few, what I am using. But um, I'm still a big fan of of Chrome OS. I use it every day here at work. I would love to get another Chromebook and and kind of that I could actually run Android apps on because this first version doesn't do that. Uh, I just haven't seen one that I'm like, okay, that's got to be, that's the one that I have to get. Uh, so I'm, I'm right there with you, Jeff. I hope Google finally gives us a, uh, a Googly option for that. Yeah. I would love to see that. Uh, what else? Google Home. You know they're probably going to talk about Google Home to some degree because that's such, been such a, a, a that category is on fire right now. Uh, a on Fuego. Yeah. I wish so. You know, a lot of people have been talking badly about Google Wi-Fi. Oops. Oh man, um, I love Google Wi-Fi. Okay. Yeah, well, I so I, I'd love to see like you know their whole home strategy if they could talk about that, but mm -hmm. I doubt that's going to happen. Like, oh, I want to see an update on Brillo. Hello, which is their IoT kind of um, operating system for devices. Mm -hmm. I'm like. <laughs> Poor Sophie wants out. I know. I'm like, our next ad read, I'm going to let her out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trapped I, with this boring I, podcast. I tried to offer her out beforehand. I told her she was not going to enjoy it, but she would not go. For, for a warning, <laughs> Sophie, we're starting a podcast. You might be a little bored. I, okay? It lasts forever. <laughs> Free Sophie, free Sophie, free Sophie. Okay, okay. Here, I'm gonna go let her out now. Yeah, see if. Now. So. <laughs> oh, look how happy she is. Mom, <laughs> thanks. If Sophie knew how to control the uh, the Amazon Echo in the house, maybe the Echo. Could of course, she's not gonna go. <laughs> oh, you insist I should go? Oh, I actually didn't want to go. <laughs> you, I, I think Sophie's disappointed that you weren't like. Going, going with her. Oh, totally. Yeah. She's like, well, wait, you're still doing this? <laughs> yeah. This podcast thing, it's, it's relentless. God, you go on forever. <laughs> oh, jeez. I was, Can't I was actually those trying, two guys? I was thinking about having, I was like, oh, what I need is an automatic door kind of functionality, but I, I'm sitting here trying to imagine how I well, do Well, you this. would think that, wouldn't you? That's, well, of course I would. I have an Echo Dot right next to me. I know. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was just saying when you ran over there. If only Sophie knew how to talk to your Amazon Echo, uh, Sophie could, you know, do some sort of a bark or, or something. And the door oh, that would, would be a cool hack, wouldn't it? That would be pretty awesome. I mean, it's it's doable. I just have to get the lever down, and there are things for that. Mm -hmm. What then, about a bark as a as a as a as a prompt? Um. Hmm. Mm, that might be a little maybe. harder. I'm like. Is there a way to record it and then have that be the prompt? I'd ha I'll have to go look at that. If anyone knows in the chat room, feel free to share. Although, oh, she's, I don't know if you can see her shadow moving out there. She was. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, should we let her back in soon, now? Soon you're going to no. get the scratches on the door. No, she she won't scratch the door. She'll just lay there. And when I pop out at whatever time we're done, she'll be like, oh, can we play now? <laughs> Dang it. Now I want a dog. Uh, someday soon. Someday you soon. You want mine? I would never take Sophie away from you. Sophie is adorable, though, I will say. Uh, we, will, we will be getting a dog here shortly. We, we have dog fever in our house. Uh -oh. uh, so, okay, so transitioning away from Google I.O., how about this? Because this was kind of uh, in the news a decent amount a couple of days ago. Fuchsia, which is this strange, I don't know. I don't know really how to explain Fuchsia other than it's this open source OS that Google is developing. It's open source, which means they're developing. Oh, so it's it. open source. Oh, I didn't know that. They're, they're developing it out in the open. The code is out there, so you can actually check in on it and see where it's going. Google really isn't talking about exactly what it is. Uh, they've given little clues here and there that it's you know powerful enough for uh, modern phones, personal computers with fast processors, lots of RAM and peripherals, which kind of covers the gamut as far as that's concerned. Uh, but they, I guess they've been working on this project for more than a year. Last August, we heard about it. Um, you know, we started to see kind of code popping up here and there. It appeared in the, the open source repository. And if you put it together, you got a command line. Well, a gentleman by the name of Kyle Bradshaw, we actually had him on uh, Tech News Today yesterday and interviewed him on the show yesterday. Uh, I guess he's been really kind of interested in what Fuchsia actually is. And so he's been checking in on it every once in a while. And he spent a little bit of time getting pieces of it working on an Android device. Meanwhile, Fuchsia is not, a, it's not based on Linux, but right. it's, uh, it's written with the Flutter SDK, which is a cross-platform, um, which is cross-platform. And so he could take pieces of this and simulate essentially the user interface of Fuchsia, at least at the point that it's developed to right now. System UI apparently is called Armadillo. Lots of weird little words there, uh, weird little names for things. But um, Fuchsia itself is based on its own microkernel called Magenta. Like I said, not Linux. Uh, but he was able to kind of thumb through there and, and put it together and put a video out. And people are just asking themselves, like, is this the next Android? What exactly are we looking at here? Do you guys have any theories on why Fuchsia exists so openly, yet we are so completely in the dark as far as what it actually is? I was really hoping you guys would tell me because I was, I was, I brought this to the, I'm like, oh, I'm going to finally learn what this is about. All right. Let's get to the bottom. I'm sorry. Of it. Is it, no, is it a way to get rid of fragmentation? Is it a way to restart? But it's open source, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think there's, that could be part of it. Um, I mean, it's such a tall there's, order to think about where Google has brought Android, what, like what Android is in the marketplace is so, it's so dominant. It's on so many devices. Yet Google needs to do something, right? The update problem is continually an issue. Um, there are regularly emerging issues around the fact that there, you know, there are pieces of the Linux code that, you know, th there's licensing issues around certain parts of that that Google wants to get away from. Um, so you can see why they might want to do something like this, uh, but it just seems like such a uh, such a big task to pull it off. Well, that's what Google does. I suppose um, so. Big, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, they have not shied away from a big task, even yeah. even failed at it. Um, I wonder if, because there's always been rumors for years, and these are just rumors, and they're not even credible enough that like, I would write a story about them, that Google is looking at doing its own chips for phones, much like Apple has yeah. done. And that would help with security and solving some of the fragmentation issues or give them more control over security. Um, what I don't know is if you, if there's anything built here that might signal something along those lines, because it, it would make sense if you were going to optimize your hardware, then you would build a new OS to optimize around that too. Oh, wow. But, yeah, that's right. But that's a pretty big, that's like one of those leaps where you're just like, and here I am, we're all smoking weed together and we'll come up with this, you know, so. <laughs> it's not even April 20th. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, oh, that's, I was like, but it is 420, but it's uh, not. Uh, no. It's 430, my time. <laughs> <laughs> Your time zone. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. I mean, I think it's all it's all guessing right now. What you see from the UI or what you see from the demonstration that Kyle put together is really just the user interface touches. 
it kind of falls in the material design realm. Things will look very cards based and it uh, has a focus on multitasking. There's parts of the demo where I saw where it's really easy to take this window and smash it together with this window and everything just kind of grows and instantly splits into, into two sides of the screen. You throw a third one in there and it just, it all morphs together in a way that makes it look like it would be good for kind of like on the fly multitasking, which might be good for a desktop environment, let's say, just as one example. So, man, I, 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 I hope at some point Google kind of comes out with some sort of an explanation as far as why this exists out in the open. But at this point, it's really just this thing that everybody's watching with curiosity going, I don't know. Uh, it's cool though. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> what does it mean? And, and maybe that's all it is. Maybe this is just Google, like they're throwing this code over the wall. Let's see how long people speculate about what we're going to do with this. <laughs> no, maybe people can tell us why we're making this. <laughs> maybe the people out there can give us a hint as far as what we should do with this. Uh, yeah, so we'll we'll see what happens. Ron, Ron Amadio did a really nice deep dive on what he saw and his takeaways. So if you want to check that out, go to arstechnica.com and you can uh, find that walkthrough. Ron's always really good at, at uh, yeah, it's, it's, reading it's the tea leaves. Trouble. Yeah, I was hoping he was going to be here to not no no displaying. So yeah, you should call like, him on your on your Amazon. There you go. I bet he has one. I bet I don't have his phone number. Yeah, I can't just randomly cold call him. Nuts. We can ask him next week. Oh, this means phone numbers aren't going away. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, nuts. Okay. What other Google stuff? I'm looking through the doc here. Oh, okay. Um, eh, there's like little little pieces. Waymo. Waymo? Waymo, yeah. Uh, they have uh, apparently their efforts in autonomous vehicles have skyrocketed. They've clocked more than 3 million public road miles. Uh, they have added a million miles in the last seven months, partially because they added 100 new minivans to their fleet uh, just back in December, back in December, 100 new ones on the road. Uh, so they're just, they're, I mean, they're blasting off. This, this whole self-driving thing's going to be here before you know it. Do you, do you welcome or do you, do you worry? What you I'm hoping that at I.O. we get a car under every seat. Oprah like. <laughs> every seat is a car. You walk into the yeah, room exactly. and you instantly yeah, know right. you're going away with a car. Like it'd be it'd be even more awesome if they had little jetpacks underneath and you could just fly around with them. Like it's like cool <laughs> dome over your greedy. head and <laughs> that's that's uh alphabet twenty fifty. That's that's a little okay. ways away. I feel like twenty thirty five. Okay. I mean tw 2050, I'm not sure if we're all going to even be here. So we might yeah. as well get our flying cars before that. <laughs> That's true. Uh, That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm always... Pro. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was going to say, I'm pro self-driving cars. I'm like, bring it. Bring I it can't on. wait. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. Um, I keep I keep hoping that at Google I.O., I know it's probably a long shot. Well, and definitely now because I think Google or Alphabet is distancing itself uh, publicly from from its Boston Dynamics investment. I keep hoping that one day at Google I.O., we're going to have the chance to interact with a Boston Dynamics robot. Ooh. What, what, what they, oh, they, have they have sold or haven't sold? I don't think they've sold yet. They've, they've they have said, not they've got rid of it. They've said that they wanted to. Apparently, there they're are no evil. buyers. Because yeah. they're evil. Wait a minute, Google or the robots? The robots. <laughs> Those robots. I know. I, think... I have I have seen Big Dog in person. Oh, seriously? Oh, yeah. Big Dog is scary as, yeah, he's scary. That's like, cool I, he was not dog. moving, but like, it's a big robot. And it, oh. Can you imagine that walking like out him. on stage at I.O.? That'd be the best thing on earth. Oh, can you imagine the like, the chasing, nuts. <laughs> chasing Larry or Sergey, <laughs> or, or maybe Larry or Sergey instead of like skydiving into the event, they ride in on Big Dog. Oh, there you go. See, so last year Larry and Sergey weren't there, right? I don't recall. That makes them it even more exciting. Stage. Come on, it was just Sundar, I think. Yeah, it was. Right. It was just Sundar. They're busy making no, no, their not, not that, cars. Not that Sund it's just Sundar. I don't mean to say that. It was <laughs> Sundar alone. So, right, right, exactly. Be clear here. Uh, yeah, they're they're too busy working on their flying cars, basically, and running from robots. That's apparently it could be so. like comic relief. 
<laughs> Apparently so. Uh, any any other Google news in here? I'm, I'm looking. I think. Uh, YouTube. Oh um, yeah, YouTube. Yes. Every tech company has decided they must be an entertainment company. So totally I thought, true. where's Microsoft though? Because in Facebook, what's I guess Facebook? Well, they went in on VR, but that didn't work out. So. No, fa Facebook has something too. So first, so yes. So first of all, YouTube, uh, Bloomberg had said that Alphabet is going to announce um, an investment in, they say hundreds of millions of dollars, more than 40 original movies and TV shows starring well-known stars like Ellen DeGeneres, Katy Perry, and different shows. These aren't YouTube Red style. Like this isn't YouTube Red content, although they are you know, still plan to support YouTube Red. YouTube Red, of course, is the paid uh, service and they have exclusives to just YouTube Red. This isn't a part of that. This is free, ad-supported content with big names. Part of the advertisers. reason for that, the, part of the benefit for that, put it that way, is that with uh, Havas and The Guardian and the BBC having walked away from YouTube, some advertisers are coming back now, but uh, YouTube me needs more uh, safe content on which to put its ads. Oh. Oh, that's smart, Jeff. Okay. I believe you. So I think it's a motive. So, so you know, we've, Leo, were he here, uh, you know, he would argue that Google is in the content business. And I said, no, 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 they don't own any content. They're not doing any content on YouTube. They're just a platform. Well, so I think this is going to be, this also raises a few interesting, difficult things where Google does really start to become a content company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if I'm searching for Ellen, do I get the most newsworthy item or do I get her show on YouTube? Right, right. Well, and they're all venturing into this space, like touching on what you were talking about a few minutes ago, Stacey. Um, Facebook also has their own kind of slate of premium shows that they're working on. Uh, sources told Business Insider, Facebook is working to launch its own original content offering sometime next month even. Two tiers of content, marquee tier for like longer, big budget uh, shows, and then a lower tier that's for shorter, inexpensive shows, five to 10 minutes, refresh every 24 hours, that sort of thing. Uh, so they're all kind of walking this weird line of going, moving from platform, you know, into kind of the, the content business. There, there just must be, I, I don't know, there must be a, a lot of money to be made from advertisers willing to advertise on content that they can control. I hadn't even considered that aspect, Jeff, as far as making sure that they have high profile content that advertisers feel safe Right. Uh, putting their ads on because that's a big issue right now, especially on YouTube, but I guess also on Facebook. And the money will go straight to YouTube rather than to outside. I mean, the problem now is I'm gonna, I'll be at VidCon in, in June and I'm going to imagine there's going to be a lot of YouTube creators there who are really nervous now because if they're a little bit edgy or if they're not big enough to be kind of guaranteed safe, uh, advertisers, uh, Google acting on behalf, advertisers' behalf will not place ads or place fewer ads on their stuff. And and and, and so that's a, the problem with that, of course, is that it uh, depresses the uh, innovation and creation of fresh new voices and content and diversity of voices. Hmm. So this is what fake news hath wrought. Oh, fake news. Did you see that Google is planning a 12-acre high-tech city in, I think it's Morocco, Morocco. I, I'm moving. in Toronto. 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 Oh, I saw I saw the headline and I did I'm, not. I'm, I want to move now. I now this is this is Larry's Island. <laughs> remember bit remember what I O a few years ago when Larry was gonna was the one. Oh yeah, island? you're right. Okay, now I remember. Yes, yes. So it's actually sidewalks. on Lake Ontario. So maybe it is Larry's Island. Who knows? So yeah, maybe it's, it's Sidewalks answer. Labs effort to build a smart city pilot platform. I mean, this is kind of cool, but it it it's also kind of it's cool because it's so googly, and they're like, "Yeah, I see nothing wrong with developing a little tiny city, right?" But it's also imminently impractical unless, like, we have giant earthquakes or fires that take down our city infrastructure. So maybe they should do work and focus on different technology. I don't know, or maybe they're thinking about places like Dubai and China, which are like, "Screw it, we'll put up a new city in the middle of nowhere." I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, the details of the proposal. Let's see here. Twelve acre strip in downtown Toronto, and uh, yeah, I mean this. This absolutely it ties into kind of what what they were talking about a few years ago, making this high, highly technological city, 
I mean, it's, okay, so Link NYC, that's that's through New York, New mm -hmm. York City. That's that's the Wi-Fi kiosks, right? That would yep. be part yes. of this plan, right? What what else? What else would happen in the in Google's? Oh, I think city? smart buildings. Uh, um, I bet smart buses. Okay. Oh, um, well, or self-driving right. people movers in oh. that twelve-acre space. Right. Well, so not just for transport, but also as information gathering devices. So both mm -hmm. to understand real-time traffic patterns or even pedestrian patterns, weather, um, state of the streets, all of that can be garnered, gathered through buses running around. I actually you can think do food delivery. Yes. You can oh, do yeah. ro robotic food delivery. So. Man, this is a crazy thing. And of course, smart streetlights. <laughs> Because you can't be a smart city without smart street lights. How are they smart? Uh, What's so dang smart LED. about these street lights? An LED with a bunch of sensors in, and then you've got software that grabs the data and does stuff with it. Like, hey, there's a lot of people around. We should make the LEDs brighter so oh. we can light the crowd. It's called dynamic street lighting. Oh, oh, yeah, it it exists in That's like. That's cool. I'd not heard of that. Oh yeah. That's a good okay. idea. Well, there you go. That's Oof. that's something they do. Move to Toronto. Uh, well, I don't know if they do it in Toronto, but they oh, okay. they do it in like Europe and I think San Diego may have a pilot project for dynamic street light. If you Google dynamic street lighting, you're going to find lots of places. Nice. Uh, that is cool. Um, okay, I have something very fancy here. So I so we've been doing the show about an hour now, which means I have lived an hour of my life using. The Samsung Dex, which I have right here. It's this little hockey puck looking thing with all sorts of cables Boy, flowing yeah, out of it. a lot of wires. This is, uh, so So I have the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, which is a very big phone, by the way. Uh, I've been using it for the last couple of weeks. Very nice. I have my issues with it, but uh, for the most part, I like it. But the new Samsung uh, devices are compatible with this hardware hockey puck down here called the Samsung Dex. I think it's $150. I believe if you want to buy one and basically the whole idea here is that it turns the phone you already have into a desktop computing environment. <laughs> uh, you know, it's coming HDMI out to the monitor. I've got my keyboard, my old school keyboard here on the desk, uh, my mouse, my, my wired mouse. Ethernet can uh, plug into here, although I'm using, you know, the, the wireless Internet through my phone. Already, I plug it in here, and then Carson, I think you have the video feed, and I'm I've been running the show so far off of Samsung Dex, so you can see here's my dock with with all my little fancy notes and everything. I'll go ahead and minimize this, and you can see the uh, the desktop environment that, and this is all being run off of the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. So the idea here is that you have a computer with you at all time. Maybe this is perfect for the uh, you know the road warrior. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's perfect for me necessarily, but I think a lot of people want to see this sort of category work where, you know, maybe it's the future that you, that we just use our phones as our computer. And I got to say in an hour's worth of using it, I'm pretty impressed. Like they've done, Samsung has done a pretty, pretty decent job of jumping into a desktop environment and having things move pretty fluidly. As you saw with the browser, this is Samsung's internet browser. I mean, it pulls up the desktop version of of Google Docs. If I was to pull this up on my mobile device, the mobile version would normally appear and it would be a lot different uh, than what you see here. This is what I would get on my Chromebook Pixel if I was to pull up the site. Some things don't necessarily work. Like normally I should be able to hover over this field that has a node in it and have that node appear in a little pop-up window, which is how I like to do things with the, with the shows and everything. The only way I can figure out how to do that is to insert note and there's my notes for that particular story. Um, so I'm sure there are little things like that, considering especially that Dex only launched a couple of days ago and reviews hit yesterday. <laughs> uh, but it's an interesting piece of kit nonetheless. And we've seen a lot of, a lot of uh, I don't know, a lot of uh, OEMs or at least a decent amount of them, including Microsoft, try and pull this off. The Verge had a, had a review of the Samsung Dex and they basically say, that uh, this is, you know, not that not that Continuum is amazing, but this is better than Continuum uh, for the most part. This is definitely ahead of Microsoft's Continuum uh, in in a lot of ways. 
uh, saying it's the best version of this that we've seen yet a good a good proof of concept jeff i'm curious to ask you because i know you i consider at least in my brain i consider you a road warrior of sorts you have you 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 have reasons why you prefer the chromebook pixel over other here's my, here's my million mile certificate i just got oh congratulations then uh, yeah then Muscle I think Road Warrior probably applies. Yes. <laughs> um, is this does this fill a void in in your life? Like, is this is this a solution to a problem that you've ever had? The Dex. Yeah. Well, okay. So I ordered that other thing that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, which you, you put your Android phone on and, and it has a little kind of laptop, and it makes the laptop work. Oh, what is that? Oh, you didn't? Oh, yeah. Uh, in fact, I tried to cancel it, and um, <laughs> that's good. what I do, and they said I couldn't. That, uh, it's called the um, uh, Sentio. Oh, I did not hear about this. Uh, oh, well, Mr. Android, you need to look at this. I'm, I'm, was it a kick? It was a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, so uh, okay. Leo warned me. Okay. okay. So you, you, you hook up, right, you hook up your um, phone, and the device is dumb, except that it, 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 so it's it's Dex, but mobile. So okay, so instead of instead of Dex, like Dex is firmly entrenched in the idea that it is to be a desktop environment yeah, where you and, have a and, monitor. And so then you have to have a monitor. You have to all that stuff. So it's, Dex is not really mobile to me at all. Right. Except I, that I, I can I go to the saying. office and use my phone. Right. Whereas this thing is mobile. So. I thought, okay, when I travel, uh, now I carry the Pixel C. What if I carry this and my phone is everything, everything. So I thought, oh, this is not a bad idea, except today, in today's news, this is what I'm mad about. This is what I'm angry about. This is what I'm disgusted about. This is what I'm having a fit about. Beyond the fact that our democracy is falling apart, but we'll leave that aside. So reports are that U.S. officials are going to ban laptops tablets and such on European flights now. Wow, really? Yeah, it's on the rundown under other. And wow. this is extremely upsetting. So I wouldn't even be able to carry on the Sentio. Wow, I hadn't even heard about that. You know, or you'd have to check the Sentio. You have to check your laptop. You can't or your check tablet. your laptop. That's awful. They're gonna get broken. Exactly, exactly, Stacy. Exactly. They tell you not to check your laptop when they make you check your bag if you have to gate check it. Exactly. Oh. This is bad. This is really bad. It, my, my, my real theory of this is this is American isolationism. This is this is putting this is the, instead of putting up a wall with Mexico, this is a laptop wall with the world. Uh, the amount of money that's going to be lost in travel both ways, Europeans coming here, Middle East people coming here, and us going there. It's going to be huge. It makes, imagine trying to go, I'm supposed to go to Australia. 24 hours flying. Australia isn't in Europe. Well, I think they're going to do it with the rest of the world, as I'm saying. Oh, okay. I'm like, like Jeff, I have good news. Know, yes. And bad news, it's further. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the good news is you might be okay on that trip to Australia. The next trip to Australia might not be so lucky. So, so my plan was, I thought the Senio, if it worked, yeah. um, was that my phone carries everything. So right. right now I have, you know, I have movies on my uh, Pixel C, or shows actually, and then I have all my stuff on my phone. So I thought, okay, I'll just carry the phone and it'll be everything. And I use the Sentio. But not now. Hmm. Hmm. Um, so the Pixel C is a convertible. How does that factor into this laptop? rule i'm i'm sure i don't think you can take tablets either uh, okay all right all you can have is a phone which i you know i i so you, i watch movies on the phone <sighs> yeah man that's... and then and then i, I was going to think okay i can carry a, t a keyboard no i'm told somebody that the batteries and keyboards were kicked off a middle eastern flight the problem is There's we're no just being too productive work. on airplanes there's no way you can work. I so you think you saw that. angry people on planes before? Mm -hmm. oh, 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 angry, bored, and bitter people on planes. What did we do before laptops and tablets on planes? We got Red angry. <laughs> we shopped. We got drunk is what we did. Yes. That's true. <laughs> we drank ourselves to sleep, basically. <laughs> I'll and wake like, up on the other side. That's how I get And, and we used to smoke. I remember traveling as a very young yeah. child on planes where people would smoke. So, I remember you know. that too. 
Actually, it sounds British much more Airways, <laughs> British Airways had the stupidest system. I remember that it was rather than being a uh, forward, you know, smoking back, non-smoking, whatever, aft. It was right hand side was smoking, left hand side was non-smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that makes a lot of sense. There was no I no see. long curtain that split the no. no. I spit in your eye. <laughs> wow, that is awesome. <laughs> okay. So the so the, the, the so the watchman call there the your 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 device would make sense to me if you had wrote if you had uh, hoteling and offices and. Mm -hmm. You could just put your thing in, right. in, in, in in an office. That makes sense. I don't see a huge need for that. The Senio was more interesting to me. Yeah, you you touch on kind of my thoughts around the decks before having played with it, particularly. Now that I've played with it, I, I like I get it a little bit more. I still don't understand why I would need it, but I think. <laughs> pegging it, pegging it in the in the realm of this is good for you know, people who travel a lot and they want to bring their desktop environment with them. That never worked for me in my in my way of thinking because there's so many components to make that possible, and just the idea of bringing a monitor with you or securing a monitor wherever you happen to go seems like a challenge in and of itself. Let alone, I mean, you can make a keyboard portable, and obviously a mouse isn't really that big. I mean. It's po more portable than putting a Mac Pro in my bag, I guess. But you know, or like a big, a, a full, a full size Windows PC in my bag. But, but I don't know how that fixes anything. It still seems like a lot of inconvenient steps, and I don't know what the payoff is necessarily. So, how much does it cost? I think it's one hundred fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. One hundred fifty dollars. Only for the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, you know, you've got to really want this style of a, of a device. And I'm sure there are people out there that this is answering their they're answering their answering their biggest wishes, you know, and they're like, finally. But a limited number. Uh, but I don't think it's a lot. <laughs> no, I don't I think mean, so either. Because you've got to plug in your keyboard. You've got to yeah. plug in your mouse. Because presumably, uh, did, did you guys ever use docs back in the day? Lap, laptop docs. I had a doc once. Didn't, well, right, it was briefly. Once, yeah, once. Yeah, once, very briefly. I don't know. L laptop doc, doc for what? You stuck oh, your laptop so, he's on it. So young. Back in the day, my son, we carried with, these big eight-pound <laughs> laptops. Oh, yeah, when we got to the office, you would. Pounds. Right. Oh, you then would, you would plug it in, yes. and the whole thing would plug in at once to your monitor and, and keyboard and everything else. Yes. Okay, I know what you're talking about. I was like, "What are you? What are you docking into your laptop?" But it's the other way around. Your laptop is docking into something else. Um. Yes, I've I've definitely seen those before. I never had one. I never used one. But, but I don't think I ever had those old school laptops either. So that that is definitely <laughs> back in the day. My first laptop was one of those and holy cow as a journalism student i was like carting that thing all <laughs> over the place it was so expensive so cumbersome but darn it i was mobile if, yeah <laughs> it came with you it was portable in air quotes yeah more, more portable than the op the other options i still have the divots in my shoulders from my backpack <laughs> oh all right, uh, let's take a break. Thank, uh, thank the sponsor, and then we'll come back and we'll do tips and tricks. And unless there's anything that we tricks, missed. tricks, I like that. No, no, okay, okay, right, right, right. Sophie has to come back. <laughs> yes, and we have tips and tricks. And tricks. <laughs> I, I don't have treats up here. I, I can't really. Stacy, Stacy, very... you'll have time. You'll have time. Go yeah. get some treats. I've, I've, I've okay. got an ad read to do here. You have plenty we'll, of time we'll, to get we'll, treats. We'll, we'll vamp. All right. This is going to be will, a highlight. Of the years of Twig. <laughs> Tips All right, and I'll tricks. run down. No, no pressure on Sophie, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, she, she, if she's not going to perform, don't worry. She just won't perform. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Uh, okay. While, <laughs> while Stacey goes and gets her, Oof. her Oof. treats. It was tips, tricks, and treats. That's that's <laughs> the three things we're bringing you in this next segment. Uh, until then, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode, and that is LegalZoom. I am a big, big fan of LegalZoom. I am a user of LegalZoom since well before I started here at Twit, well before 
uh, LegalZoom was a sponsor of Twit. We used LegalZoom in our house to put together our uh, our will, our last will and testament. And uh, it was a really easy process. So I was thrilled when I saw that LegalZoom was coming on board here at Twit. Uh, there are five things that you can depend on uh, when you're using LegalZoom for your business. One is reliability. More than a million people, including myself, uh, have made the smart choice and used LegalZoom to help start their business uh, for all sorts of things that you need to run your business, incorporation, LLCs, nonprofits, and a whole lot more. They've, they've got a, just a huge menu of items and you can poke through there and see how it can help your business. Experience. LegalZoom has been helping business owners of every kind for over 15 years. They've been in the business a long time and uh, they know the ins and outs of all this stuff so they can help you through it. Three, speaking of help you through it, helpful support, LegalZoom's U.S.-based team of customer service professionals is always just a click away or a call away, depending on how you prefer to uh, get your help and support. Uh, they're really easy to get in touch with either on the site or you can give them a call and uh, get your support that way. For legal advice, of course, LegalZoom isn't a law firm, so they built a network of independent attorneys who can review uh, contracts, they can interpret employment laws, can help you navigate through the legal world. Uh, so you have an option there through LegalZoom. And five, no surprises. With LegalZoom, you get upfront pricing, you get customer reviews, and a satisfaction guarantee. And uh, that's to, to make it completely transparent because that's what you want, complete transparency. See how LegalZoom can help you start and run your business at LegalZoom.com now. Uh, don't forget to enter Twig at checkout for special savings. That's LegalZoom.com. Use the code TWIG, T-W-I-G, and you'll get some special savings. And we thank LegalZoom uh, for their support of This Week in Google. Stacy is still uh, Stacy is still away from keyboard. Uh, so she will be back. <laughs> She's still working on the treats. The dog uh, has kidnapped her. Does that mean that you have a tip or a trick? Or no, you probably have a number. Arf. Arf. <laughs> oh, I gotta change my I gotta change my oh, lighting. That's we, my trick right we, now. We have Stacy back, actually. Sorry she, about that. I was looking for a clicker so she'd listen to me, but, but <laughs> so okay. far the treats working. <laughs> That's okay. Uh the uh the treat has been secured. The treats have it. Ta da. So the question nice. is this time will she will she will she jump or not? She should. She does. Like she is she'll do anything for a treat. All right. Let's see if I can get the camera angle appropriate for oh, yeah. Ru the dog. Yeah, take off that. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. I can see Sophie. It here. Sophie. Sophie. Oh. All right, there she is. Sophie. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, okay. nice. Oh. Twirl, twirl, good girl. Sit up. How many do I have to do before up. I get a treat? Jeez. Good girl. <laughs> Yay, down. Sophie. Give me a roll down. Down. Oh, she's so adorable. Okay, I'll give you that. Let's see. I wonder if she'll bow for me. She used to do bows. Let's see. All right, up. Bow. Oh, nope. She, you'll just see her butt. I've forgotten. <laughs> we used to do all kinds of cool tricks. She was in agility. Okay. Let's see if she'll walk. Walk. Okay. Up. Sophie. Up. Walk. There you oh, go. Oh, that was Yay. great. Yay. Oh, man. I want a dog so bad. Sophie's awesome. She's like, mom or How old is Sophie? Five. Five. Not quite a pup, but pretty young. Touch. Oh, here. Touch. Good girl. All right. Nice. Touch. Good girl. She's like, this, she is, this is why I lasted so long through this podcast, says Sophie. So, she, she so I was a dog person. I'm a dog person. My wife's a cat person. When we had oh. the debate, my wife would wake up the kids on a cold, rainy, miserable morning and say, if you had a dog, you'd have to walk it now and pick up its poop. <laughs> and I she, lost. yeah, she won. <laughs> I love the cats. I love the cats. I can't do a cat. I'm really allergic to cats. Oh. Um, so I'm kind of locked into a dog. They're they're mostly good. She barks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when, when she gets going, you'll be like, oh. I, I grew up with it. I grew up with dogs. Um, 
as a kid. So I was very fond of dogs. You know, all through my childhood, we had at least one, if not two or three dogs run around the house. So it's been a long time coming. I've really wanted to get a dog again. I would, I would get a cat if I didn't sneeze every single time I was near them. And I think my, one of my daughters is also has inherited my allergy to cats. So I don't think that's going to work, unfortunately. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you for the tricks. And the, and the treats. I'm sure she thanks you for the treats. That was one of my better ideas in the entirety of the history of Twig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. I don't know about that the audio little... listeners, but I'm happy. Jason, oh. your best idea was losing your identity. That was your best idea you've ever had. That taught, taught, I lo learned a lot of lessons uh, you did. throughout Good. that. There was even a story today about two-factor, about how the SMS two-factor was... Uh, was manipulated, let's say, to allow someone to steal a bunch of money from a German bank. Whoa. So there's that, to which I, I wish that all, you know, sites and banks and whatever would move to the app method instead of relying on SMS. But I realize that perfect security, you know, good security is, is better than no security at all. So, but yes, yeah, the SS7 flaw. And uh, it actually requires a lot of manipulation in order to have pulled this off. This was a, this was a flaw for a very long time. It was known that it was a, a potential flaw that could be uh, manipulated by someone who could get access and intercept the two-factor authentication codes in order to get in. And apparently that's what happened. Uh, they were able to intercept it via SMS. Uh, networks. I guess a bank makes for a good target. Yeah, yeah. I mean... You wouldn't maybe work really hard for something lame, but getting no. into a bank. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it required the hacker to lure their victims with malware, of course, capture the account number, ID, password, and then work their way into the actual uh, network, the SS7 network, which I think requires um, them to have access to the, the just a deeper level access to the cell network from, from the inside, potentially, uh, in order to intercept those codes. So, You'd have to go through a lot of work as as they did, but they proved that it was possible and people have been warning about this for years. So there you go. But I guess the, the flip side of that is they've been warning about it for years and it's never happened because it's so difficult. So two-factor authentication with SMS codes is better than no two-factor authentication. So anywho, uh, so Jeff, you have a number? or maybe uh, you Yeah, I actually have two of them. Awesome. So... Um, Snap, Snap, as it's now known, uh, released its first or earnings as a public company. It's uh, hit a disappointing 166 million daily users versus more than a billion, for example, for WhatsApp. And um, a growth rate of 5%. And uh, year over year growth rate continued to slip falling to 36% year over year from 48% in Q4. Shares fell more than a quarter or almost a quarter, 24%. Wow. Meanwhile, so that who does that get blamed on? Instagram. Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. So then uh, Yelp also announced disastrous results to CNBC and lost one fifth of its value. And, and so who gets blamed for that? Facebook. Google. 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 <laughs> uh, Yelp's founder always say, you failed the quiz. Jeez, Stacey. No treat for I'm you, like, Stacey. I'm like, no treat I'm for you. I'm not looking at the screen, but. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to uh, roll over to get a treat mm. now. Um, so uh, I, I could just see. This. So, so Yelp constantly complains about Google. They, they go after Google in Europe all the time uh, as kind of an ally of Google, of Euro, Europeans saying Google is big, bad and awful. And uh, Snap is not happy. So it's, it's the giants are having, you know, demonstrable impact on these competitors. And I suspect there'll be some more whining about that. And That's some more, numbers. And some more effects uh, for other companies as a result. Yeah, the mm -hmm. Snap, uh, Snap especially, because, I mean, man, even a year ago, the, the hype train was moving very rapidly around Snap. And I feel like in the last couple of months, there have been a, there's been a lot of silence around it, just in the fact that Instagram has, I don't know, they've rolled out a lot of features and, and regained, recaptured people's uh, imaginations. And as a result... You know, I've, I've actually talked to a lot of people just outside of the tech sphere, but that, that use Snapchat that have been lured back into the into Instagram uh, because of those features. And 
I don't know, at one point it really seemed like Snapchat just as a service had had captured magic and and really understood the market that it was appealing to and then Instagram all Instagram had to do was copy a few of the features and that was enough to pull people back over that doesn't that doesn't bode well for Snap but so Instagram has 700 million uh users Twitter has how many users 300 yeah it's, it's like 300 yeah Twitter's 328. So I, yeah, I thought Snapchat was was bigger by now. What are they at um, They're still innovative. They're still doing neat stuff. They still have loyalty in what they do. They're still different for now. But 166 yeah. daily users is... Yeah. yeah, and it's slowing, right? That's what you were saying. Well, the growth is slowing. Right. Right. Um, so that was a... You know, they went public now and came out with a kind of a, a call like that. Mm hmm. Volatile in the early goings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stacy, was the, was the the treat yours, or do you have something else? I, I actually have a thing. If you guys want awesome. to see it, that is not a dog. Heck yeah. Um, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> like it won't be as cool, but you know. Speak, Stacy. So this. Speak. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is the Notify doorbell cam Ooh. from Heath Ooh. Seneca. And this is interesting to people because you don't have to wire it. So this is the doorbell part that goes wherever your doorbell is, right? And this part, as I unbox this, is the camera. I'm gonna pop this guy out. So you screw this into your light bulb, a light fixture. Usually you have a porch light by your doorbell. And then you mount the camera up and the, the light bulb powers the camera. So your doorbell just sticks on there, right? And then it talks to, or sorry, sticks where you want it to stick, and this talks to everything. So this is wait kind of wait, the wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm being dense here, Stacey. I'm being dense. Okay. The thing in your uh, right hand, is that the camera? This is the camera, yes. So the bulb is really just a bulb? The bulb is a bulb. There's also a microphone in it. I don't know if you can see the, oh. the speaker perforations right there, but there's a speaker right there. So what oh, if it's inside one of those things? Most, lo most things are in a fixture. They're not light bulbs on their own. You mount the camera outside the fixture. But the but the microphone's inside the fixture. It is. Mm. I'm gonna install this today and I will report back. So this is something I haven't installed yet. I just got oh, we'll it. wait. Go ahead and do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I am so glad I wore pants today because I've been running up and down. <laughs> and then here is the it's final worth piece. It. Is the doorbell chime. Ta-da! You'll plug this in and it'll it'll ring the doorbell. Ta-da. Okay, Sophie's so that is my... She's just going to do that. Eventually, <laughs> someone's going to come home and she's going to go crazy. And you guys are really going to regret that she came back in here. <laughs> no, I, love, I love having... You got to have Sophie all the time. <sighs> Sophie That's doesn't true. have much longer. She's she's doing good. So, so the idea here is that you can turn any light bulb, for the most part, into a security device outside of the front of your door. Uh, with yes. a doorbell. Okay. Yes. It's a video doorbell that doesn't require you to wire in the doorbell stuff. Ah. So if, if wires scare you, yeah. although doorbell wires are not scary. You know, that's, I, I've, I have renewed um, respect for this type of, of product category where it, where it allows you to not worry about wires in, in one of my, in my daughter's bedroom, she has a light switch on her wall and it switches a very, you know, it switches one of the switches in the room, but that's not the right switch for it to, to actually toggle. And we keep meaning to, you know, bring out an electrician or whatever to, to do whatever their magic is to do that. But a, you know, that costs money and B it's inconvenient and C we, it's just low priority, but we have, um, we have the hue system at home. And I realized that the hue switch, which has like an on off, and then it has little dimmer buttons in between. Mm -hmm. Like that allows you to go wireless. So I, I got one of those kits with a hue bulb, put it in her room, mounted that on the wall next to the other switch. And it's like, I didn't have to bring an electrician in and it only costs like $45 and done. It's like yes, the best thing in the world. I was like, why didn't I think to do this sooner? This is awesome. 
That is a fugly light switch, but yes. It is. It's yes. not the it's not the most attractive light switch in the world, but it's better because I mean she's she's four and she could never reach the light to turn it on oh. or off. Oh, that's She'd, a great use case. And so, and so we're like, well, this actually now she has the the power to do it herself. If you tap it once, it's full brightness. If you tap it again, it's like it's half brightness, and the third time it's a night light. You get a treat. She gets yeah, a treat. right. Exactly. It pours out candy. Um, <laughs> uh, Only the color she wants. <laughs> I would. I would never put a candy dispenser in my four-year-old daughter's room. That is. That is <laughs> basically clear here. parent suicide. Uh, anyways, it, it, so I have new respect for for going around the electrical requirements of the home and just going wireless instead. That's really there. Cool. You go. I love it. Um, mine is actually an announcement that Google um, showed off this morning. It's not revolutionary necessarily, but it's it's an expansion of kind of what Google's doing around its search as relates to events. Uh, Google basically says that they are um, now going to have a new part of, of the site, both in the app as well as on the Google search uh, in, in a browser that when it detects that you're searching for an event or if you put in a search query like events near me, it has a new kind of way of presenting to you thanks to, you know, it's it's, it's tied into like Eventbrite, Ticketmaster, Meetup, uh, Vivid Seats, Live Nation, a bunch of these other, a StubHub. Uh, it has a new way to present to you in a, a very nice kind of graphical way, a calendar of events so that you can, that, you know, can easily find uh, events that are happening around you, be it, you know, live performances or, or, or plays or whatever the case may be. Google says, uh, it's, there's, you know, they're not taking any commissions on ticket sales or anything like that. They're just putting a new kind of UI around what you get when you're searching for events so that, cause I mean, if you do it right now, it's actually pretty ugly. What you get back, you get a bunch of random broken kind of results. This organizes things really neatly and then directs you through to the site uh, to make your purchase through the site if you choose to do that. So, um, you know, anything that makes finding things to do a little bit easier, I, I, I saw that and I thought that that looks pretty great. Facebook's been doing this for a while, um, been really involved in kind of managing events through pages and stuff. So this is Google kind of getting in on that a little bit more. And, I kind of uh, wish... I don't often search for events, but I love that like when Spotify, because it knows who I'm listening to, it mm -hmm. will let me know when those artists are performing in my neighborhood. And that feels a little bit less, a little bit more useful because it's so tied to what I like already. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of, I'm trying to think of how often, I guess as a parent, especially when I had really, like when my daughter was four, God, all I wanted to do was get out of the house. So <laughs> I'd be like, events near me, anything. Yes, yes. Please show me uh, something to do. Please help me. Make Preferably it that doesn't cost very much money. Oh, yeah. At a certain point, I just gave up. <laughs> I'll fling money at it, whatever. <laughs> whatever um, it takes. But I, I wonder, like, I guess I, I'm curious how useful that would be, is, is I guess, or how, how often I would use something like that. I'm just kind of thinking. Yeah, I mean, yeah. knowing that it exists, I suppose I would use, use it with intent. But really, like, I, I think of, you know, my history of searching for, oh, I heard this this band's coming to town or whatever, and I put it into Google. And the results that I've gotten, sometimes you have to go three, four, five deep before you finally find the Ticketmaster link, which is where you actually Got buy it. tickets or whatever. And I don't know, it's just a, I don't know if I necessarily would intentionally go, Google does events really well, so I'm going there right now to do this search. I would do that search there anyways. It's just now I'm getting a better a better format um, of results that hit me back so that I find quicker, you know, so that it's easier for my, I don't know, easier for me to discern what I'm actually looking at because okay. sometimes those results can be kind of confusing, filled, filled with a bunch of things that are like resellers as opposed to yeah. the actual event uh, venue selling the ticket. So, Stacey, when I, when I was on newspaper online sites, uh, working on those, mm -hmm. everybody would come up with a bright idea and say, I know what people want. They want to know listings of entertainment stuff. And uh, so we dutifully built those things and then it hardly ever got any usage uh, because you don't use it every night. You only use it when you're going out. Right. So you're right. Yeah. I think the usage is not uh, frequent. So it's hard to imagine that somebody gets in the habit of using it then, mm -hmm. you know, when it is an occasional thing, unless you are really young and really hip, which right. we, which are, we all are. Which is not any of us. Oh, <laughs> I, okay. I'm sorry, Jason. 
you. No, I, I figure we're, we're all in the young and hip category. Come on, just mm -hmm. live it. Just uh, allow it to happen. Live in my dream. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, hey, reminder to everybody. Yeah. Mother's Day is this weekend. So mm, if you have yes. a mother figure, special lady in your life, random other person that you think is awesome and helped raise you, send them a card or a text. Or but probably a card. Flowers. Or flowers, a card, and text. IoT gadgets. Mm. <laughs> Give them a device that allows them to peer into your home at at any time via oh, camera. Here's a, hey, see, I, I don't, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm focused thing. on. Okay. What? Someone just put in a Google thing for Mother's Day. What's that? Google Photos gets a Mother's Day movie feature. Yes. Here's how to make one. Oh. Aww. I haven't looked at eh. that, but I'm sure, I'm sure because you can go into Google Photos and assign a face to a person. I'm sure it's the kind of thing where you tell it. Oh, uh, right. This that's is pretty, me and mom. pretty amazing, you know, when you get down to it. Yeah, that is really cool that they can do stuff like that. I don't know if I do. My mom would be freaked out. She'd be like, oh, you told Google who I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, sorry. I'm going to delete the video file and it'll all go away. Google won't know who I am anymore. I'm sorry, Jeff. You were saying something and I... <laughs> No, I'm, 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 I know I'm obsessing on Sophie because I, I, I want a dog. Um, have you ever wired Sophie up with any Internet of Things things? Uh huh. She had a whistle for a while. Uh, it's an activity tracker, <laughs> but it was only it was only useful in that it told us that she sleeps under the bed for twenty hours a day, which we knew. <laughs> <laughs> but it told you what twenty hours of the day, right? There's got to be something um, yes, useful around yes, that I information. Was, well, so my my default, because Sophie used to be an escape artist because she is, I don't know what she is. She's a mutt. We got her from a rescue. Um, and she would creep through our back fence. Like just we, our back fence used to look like a war zone with like chicken wire up and just everything. We were trying, we spent thousands of dollars reinforcing so Don, it. Donald Trump her. should learn things from you about how to build walls, you're saying? Exactly. Or a fence. Yeah. Fence, yeah. wall. Um, so <laughs> I would... She has a dog door downstairs, so I would put a motion sensor in any outdoor camera I was testing. I would face to the fence line, so when she went out the dog door, it would trigger the camera, and then <laughs> we could record and see how she was getting out, because then we could reinforce that area of the fence. Mm. So There you go. Scooter X in chat says that Sophie needs a fit bark. A fit bark. That's like the whistle, isn't it? Yeah, it Let's must see. be. It must be. I think uh, this one has a, I, I know this guy. It used to have a subscription. Oh, the Deep actional insights. <laughs> I don't think you're getting any audio from this because the audio is playing through my phone. So that's interesting about Dex. It doesn't pass the audio through, but I guess it's just, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, okay. Well. Oh, look oh. at how cute those dogs are. They are cute. And they're very fit, apparently. They've reached seven of seven goals. <laughs> you can set goals oh. for your dog. Oh, boy. This, this world we live in where we're tracking all the, the minutia of our of our daily lives is craziness. My my dog does not. She She's not a fan. Like, I, I put a tracker on her. Yeah. And she um, tried to chew it off. So <laughs> she's not, yeah. Not a fan of being tracked uh, 24 hours a day. She's she's not. That. She she knows that I'm trying to thwart her escape. She always comes back. So, you know, <laughs> it's just I worry because we've got, you know, animals that live out here. So, yeah, yeah. Got to be worried. Yeah. About that. Guys, this was a lot of fun. I think we've uh, reached the end of uh, of episode 404, yeah, 404, by you. the way, uh, which uh, in the doc says Leo not found, which would be absolutely accurate. I think that's a great title. I think, I think that's what there we have is. to go for. Um Thanks for letting me crash a party. I always have fun uh, hopping in for this week in Google with you both. Thank you. Oh, no, it's Thank always you. great to have you. And yeah. we'll, I'll see you next week in, uh, that's in right. your backyard. That's, that's right. Google I.O. Hopefully it doesn't rain. I don't think it's going to rain. It's just going to be a little so chilly. So it'll be but. you being Leo uh, in person? Yeah. So next week's show will actually be... Um, well, you're you're joining for that as well, Stacey, right? Are you? I know. Um, Carsten, yeah, am I? I think so. I'll Part be remote. Last though. time, right? Did we? 
Yes. Yeah, Car- Carson yes. says yes. Carson's like, yes, so, he will be there. <laughs> yes, will be yes. There. So we'll we'll be on site, and then Stacy, you'll be you'll be joining uh, remote. But yeah, it'll be. Uh, the well, it's more complicated than last year because last year right, Leo hosted from headquarters. Right. Right. Yeah, and he'll he'll be there hosting. So, but it be, I but I mean it's still uh, you know remote mixed with local in a remote location. It kind of makes my brain hurt thinking about it. It's gonna be a lot of fun, regardless, no matter how you slice it. I'm sure there'll be a lot to talk about. At I.O. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Stacy Higginbotham, uh, what, where do you want to point people? Uh, Stacy on IOT.com or yeah, where, that where do you want people to go? Or IOTpodcast.com? Yes. Stacy on IOT.com because that's where you'll find anything and everything I do. Right on. With the exception of dog tricks. So. <laughs> you only get those on this Only on Twig. Only on Twig. Thank you, Stacy. This was a pleasure. Appreciate it. And then, of course, Jeff Jarvis. I will be seeing you next week uh, at IO, buzzmachine.com. Yeah, uh, yeah. What do you want people to know? That's all. That's, that's it. it. That's nothing else. No. <laughs> nothing else. Nothing else. Oh, boring. All right. Uh, fair enough. I'll see you next week. Thank you again. Um, you can find me. Uh, well, I do tech news today every weekday with Megan Maroney here at Twitter. I also do all about Android every Tuesday evening. And uh, every once in a while, I drop in here for uh, This Week in Google when Leo is out and about gallivanting wherever he gallivants. because He, he is a, a fond gallivanter. Uh, Twig is every Wednesday, 1.30 p.m. Pacific, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 20. 20- 30 2030 utc uh, you can always of course uh watch this live twit.tv slash live you can find the show on the show page on the web that's twit.tv slash twig you can find all of our back episodes uh every single one of them start from the beginning and enjoy the whole series uh from the beginning as if it were your first time through the entire show uh but that is all there is to it uh, thank you so much for watching we'll see you next week ne- next time from google's campus on this week in google bye everybody bye